Welcome to Lesson 4 of Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to do unit testing. First, a quick explanation. In our last lesson, we used the Eclipse scrapbook to look at a person object, and we were able to see that our methods did what they were supposed to. However, we had to manually look at the results and check if they were correct or not. A unit test is totally automated and tells us if there's a problem. Once our test classes are written, we can test our whole application just by pressing a button. This is especially valuable when we have to make changes to our code and when we want to make sure we haven't broken anything. Unit testing is a key element of agile software development, sometimes known as extreme programming. Eclipse integrates the popular JUnit testing software from JUnit.org and makes it very easy to test our code. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is decide where to put our test classes. When we are writing a program to deploy to end users, we may not want to include the unit test classes in the deployed application. So it makes sense to keep the test classes in a separate folder from the other application classes. One recommended way to do this is to create a separate source folder in Eclipse for the test classes. To do this, we just select our project and then go File, New, Source Folder. We'll call this Folder Test. We press Finish and we've created a test folder under our Total Beginner project. Now we want our test classes to be inside the same package as the classes being tested. If you recall, we created a package called Org Total Beginner Tutorial and then put the person class inside that package. So we need to create the same package underneath the test folder. To do that, we select the test folder, we go File, New Package, and just type in the name of the package. Org Total Beginner dot Tutorial. One quick note about the menus. In Eclipse, usually we can either use the pull down menus, for example, File, New, and so on, or we can use the right click context menus, New, so on. It's whichever you prefer. Now we're ready to create our first JUnit test. To do this, we select the package we just created. We can right click, go New, JUnit Test Case. I'll move this down so you can see it. Now the name is normally the class being tested in this case person, followed by the word test, and the class under test is the person class. Now notice that we're getting a warning up here, superclass does not exist, and we're getting a warning down here saying that JUnit 3 is not on the build path of the project. The build path is where we tell the Eclipse compiler where to look for program libraries that we are using that are not part of standard Java. Since JUnit is a third party package, we need to tell the compiler where on our system to find this uh, external library. Now we could fix this problem right now by just pressing the click here to add JUnit 3 to the build path. However, we're going to pretend that we didn't see this message and just keep going and you'll see why in a minute. When we press the next button, we see all of the methods in the person class. We also see all of the methods that we inherited from the object class. Remember we talked about that, that the object was the super class of all uh, classes in Java and that the object provides some inherited methods. In this lesson we're going to test the person constructor and we're going to test the set name and set maximum books methods. 
as we'll see by testing these methods we actually test the get name and get maximum books methods as well. Next we'll press the finish button and Eclipse has created a test class for us. I'm going to maximize this here so we can see it a little bit better. However, we see that we have a number of compiled errors. These red X's and underline areas here uh, is Eclipse's compiler's way of telling us we've got compile errors. Now we can see the compiler errors here in the source file. We can also bring this back to its normal size, highlight the problems view down below, and see the compiler errors listed in the problems view. If we click on the first problem below here, we can see the message test case cannot be resolved to a type. This means the compiler cannot find a class called test case. If we look at the second error, it indicates there's a problem with the import. So the compiler cannot find the package JUnit framework test case, which is where it would get the class called test case. So it looks like Eclipse cannot find the JUnit program libraries, which is where we were, what we were warned about in the warning message a minute ago. Now let's see if Eclipse can solve this problem for us. Let's go back to our first error. I'm going to move this up so you get a better view. We're going to right click, go down to Quick Fix, move this down so you can see it, and you can see that we've got a couple suggestions that Eclipse is making. The first one is add JUnit to the build path. That seems like it fits with the problem we're having, so let's press OK. See what happens. All of our problems disappear. We have no problems in the problem view, and if I maximize our source, we have no problems in our source file. So Quick Fix in Eclipse helps you identify common programming problems, suggests a possible fix, and then automatically fixes it for you. Is that cool or what? We're going to use Quick Fix a lot. It's one of the really great features of Eclipse. Let's take a quick look at what Eclipse did to fix our build path problem. We'll reduce this back and take a look at our in the package explorer and we can see that now we have this item JUnit3 under our total beginner package. If we select total beginner, right click, come down to build path and then select configure build path, we get we get a form called Java Build Path, which is under the properties for our project Total Beginner. If we select the Libraries tab, we can see that Quick Fix added the JUnit 3 library to our project. Now, we could have added this library ourselves manually by coming in here and saying Add Library, but it was easier to let Eclipse do it for us. So let's cancel this form, go back, maximize our person test, and get back to the testing. Next, let's look at the person test class. The first line, we're just putting in the package name to put it in the same package as the person class. The next line is the import statement. We're importing the test case class from the JUnit Framework package. We talked about imports in the previous lesson, and here we're importing this package so that we can use test case without having to put in the full name. Now the third line, public class person test extends test case. What we're saying is that we want person test, which is going to be our class, to be a subclass of the test case class which uh, we're getting from the JUnit package. So person test is going to have all the methods available that it inherits from the test case superclass. We'll start using one of these methods in a minute. Now Eclipse has created 
three methods for us according to the boxes we checked when we created this uh, JUnit test case. It's created a test person, which tests the constructor. It's created a test set name and test set maximum books, which we're going to use to test the getters and setters. Now, right now, these methods all have a fail not yet implemented uh, command in them, so I think we have some work to do. To get started, let's go ahead and run the test and see what happens. So to do that, I'm going to click on the Run menu. I'm going to come down here to the Run As, and I'm going to say Run as a JUnit test. Now, it asks me do I want to save my source file because I've made changes and I'm going to say yes and I'm also going to check this box so it automatically, I always want it to save the source file when I run a new test. So I press OK and Eclipse is running my test and here it is. The test results are displayed over here in this JUnit view on the left and you can see that it says it ran three. I have three failures, and uh, it's not surprising since it, it looks like we told it to fail. Now I can go down here, make this bigger, and I can see why each test failed. And the reason for the failure is not yet implemented. If we look at the person test class, we see that Eclipse created each of the test methods with the same message, fail not yet implemented. At this point, we are ready to modify the test methods to actually test the person class, and that's exactly what we'll do in the next lesson. This is the end of lesson number four. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.